the plan, I guess, for how yeah. this is going to work. Okay. Well, the plan is pretty much what I laid out in the press conference. Okay. You know, the pros who are training with me are going to go to Austin mm -hmm. in some quick fashion. The next couple of weeks, they'll be there. Mm -hmm. We're going to train there until we do an altitude camp, which we always do. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go to uh, the Irvine Speedo Grand Challenge in Irvine. And then we're going to go back to Austin for the three weeks before trials. And then, so pretty much everything stays the same in terms of their preparation and just different location. And everybody you think will go that was with you at I think Tempe? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are some that some with Herbie, they'll stay with Herbie. But, you know, the ones that are some with me probably will come. Yeah. Okay. Bob, on the full day in Paris, you'll be with the French team? I will be. Okay. I'll be with the French team. It's for several reasons. Um, Last summer when I was the head coach of the U.S. team, and I was also, you know, had Leon, who'd be yeah. some guys there, yeah. you know, I sat down, the first question in the USA press conference was, will Leon break Michael's record? I don't want to be in that position. I don't want to put Team USA in that position. I would never do that. And I have a feeling in Paris, Leon might be a little bigger than he was last summer. So it just makes it so much better for everyone for me to coach with the French because the French have no stipulations about me coaching other nationalities and it's a little different with the USA team, which I certainly respect. So um, it just makes sense for everybody because then I can coach everybody that I'm coaching now. So that'd be good. What is the plan with Leon since he's, yeah. you know, student athlete at Arizona State at the moment? He's a pro. He'll be a pro. He's a, he is a pro. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was going to do that at ASU. That was he was going to be finished with the NCAA after after, 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 this, after this past meet. Yeah. So he was going to turn pro. In. And wow. Hubie? Okay. Oh, we're just going to say how can't comment on Hubie. Okay. When does that happen, Bob? Like, because at this meet, right? Like, yeah. is it? Can you not interact with him yet? Or? No, I mean, we're working on that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can say hi and you know that kind of thing, but no, I don't do skill instruction or anything like. You're not going over splits with. Nah, him. not too much. Not too much. Okay. Just enjoying his swimming, hopefully enjoying. <laughs> we'll talk about the Paris Olympics and what do you see, the over, overview, not just Leon, not just Hubie, yeah. who's certainly sure. potentially going to be Mellis, but, but also the other athletes you coach. Um, well, I mean, we have a great group. They had a great camp. The ones who are at altitude are swimming quite well here. Um, and I feel like they're going to be contenders there. That was the whole point of them coming and what we're trying to do. So they seem to be right on track. We'll just try to keep going through the process and, you know, got a little different last week, but it, it's really the same process for them in terms of the training, so it should be good. You've coached somebody who came into the Olympics with massive expectations mm. before. Yeah. Are there anything, lessons from doing that with Michael that you can translate with Leon? Yeah. Um, yeah. He, um, you just have to focus on what you're doing, right, and realize that the challenge of the Olympics is not – necessarily swimming the events. Everybody's trained to do that and is capable of doing that, but can you do it in the environment, right? That's the challenge. So you have to do a couple things. Number one, you gotta learn how to block out some noise because there will be constant noise. You have to learn how to adapt when things kind of pop up because they will, right? You can't just expect it's gonna be some like dream sequence of events where you just go and it happens. So you go in with that mindset and then you just, I part of my job will be to just kind of fend some things off before they even get to him. That's a big part of it as well. So it's, it's kind of a team effort on that. But it's really all about his mindset. And he's well aware. I mean, we've talked about it for years now, what that challenge would be like. Is Michael in your toolbox for helping prepare Leon? Well, I mean, I think they talk every now and then. But, you know, in general, Leon's got to prepare Leon. That's the main thing about this thing. Because when he has to go get up on that block, it's going to be him. And we can cheer all we want, but that's not going to really have anything to do about how he swims. So he knows that he's got to take ownership of it. He's got to make the decisions that are going to help put him in the best position for success. Maybe two more questions? Yeah. How is he doing with that, like all the things you just well, described? Well, he's always been good with it. Okay. Like, he's pretty independent, right? He doesn't really need me to do much at these meets. Um, and I tried to make it that way because that's how you want to bring them up. You, the last thing you want to do with a high level swimmer is make them dependent on their coach because there might be a time where the coach isn't there or something happens and things get disruptive for a couple of weeks and they have to keep it going, right? So he's very good at knowing what he needs to do and how he needs to do it. And we also have built in a system of routines that are basically automatic at this meet. Like all he needs to know is when the events start and that lets him know 
when he's going to warm up, what he's going to do, when he's going to get out of the warm up, when he's going to put his suit on, when he's going to go to the ready room, when he, you know what to do after. He has a whole thing. So he doesn't really have to make a lot of decisions at the meet, and that's by design, because the last thing you want to be doing at the Olympics is trying to figure that out. That just has to be part of your DNA at that point. So well, he's, he's pretty independent. You put together this great training group and everything, yeah. but then a once-in-a-lifetime job comes open at the same time. What yeah. was the process like of trying to make this all very work. difficult I mean obviously you know I put my heart and soul into ASU love it to death love those guys and you know when the the opportunity came up you know it was kind of a I won't, it was kind of an agonizing month let's just say I haven't had a lot of sleep for a while <laughs> because I knew what the ramifications would be you know having said that the opportunity is one that is so rare in this sport and quite frankly so special that I could not say no to it. And I don't think anybody who understands swimming would, I mean, everybody understands that I think. It's, it's a very special place, particularly for swimming. And uh, I just had to do it. And I kind of try to explain to them, you know, it's like we get caught up in swimming. All of us love it so much. It's just a thing we do. But they're gonna move on someday and have a career. And this is my career. <laughs> So I'm going to be doing this long after they're finished swimming, and I have to kind of make some decisions in accordance with that. And I, and I told him, you know, in 10 years, you'll understand. Right now, you're not going to understand, but you will. So I think that was part of it. Are Eddie's boys still yeah. uh, training with Eddie? Yes. Yeah. All the Texas guys are training with Eddie through the trials. Cool. Yes. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank thanks you. so much.